Uh, so Seth Lockman is uh, the communications director for Blue Shift Aerospace. Seth created and co-hosted Radio Astronomy, a radio talk show about space science and exploration. And he is now a JPL, which is a Jet Propulsion Laboratory Solar System Ambassador. With backgrounds in online presence development, technical writing, and rapid prototyping with software, Seth is thrilled to share the story of Blue Shift and the team working to bring launch services to Maine. Um, so as an aside, uh, Seth, a little bit of background. I usually reach out to my five-minute genius speakers way early, like October or November, because it's a really hard ask, and people's schedule get busy. And, and it, it, yeah, yeah, so yeah, this is where this comes from. And so I reached out to another, another person at, at Blue Shift, and he said, I, I think I can do it, I, I, but I have to let you know, my wife is pregnant, and it's right near the due date. Um, and so I reached out to him last week, and I said, how's it going? He said, yeah, um, not only is the baby due, but I literally have a NASA deadline the very same day as the due date. I don't think I can do this. And I said, I'd still really like to have you because I think what you're doing is cool. And he said, how about Seth? So Seth is here very, very quickly. Um, I just want you to know this is, it's, it, you can go back to Sasha and say, really? You had this much time? And give him a hard time. But um, so, so he really stepped in it to, to pick it up. So, and his favorite science theme, pop, popular culture item, you said it was Symphony of Science? Yes. So what's Glorious Dawn? Uh, that's the single. Symphony of uh, Science is a project. Yeah. So Symphony of Science is a project, and the single is A Glorious Dawn by Melody Sheep, right? Yes. yes you Which I have never heard of it, but uh, I, would, I would encourage you to check it out. This is the only song we've gotten, so... Without any more ado, for a I'm Seth Lockman, Communications Director at Blue Shift Aerospace, and you just saw a test of our rocket engine. So, what sets that engine apart? Uh, mainly, the fuel in there is bio-derived. Uh, this brings advantages. For example, you can cheaply source the raw materials for that fuel from farms across New England. Uh, the fuel contains no heavy metals and no toxins. Uh, none are released by refining it, none are released during launch. In fact, you could eat the stuff, though I would not recommend it. The bio biomolecules that are in the fuel give it a uh, higher energy density and a greater performance than any fuel in its class. And the stuff is so safe that away from the oxidizer, uh, it has a zero TNT value. You, you can't make it go unless you really want to. So it is safer, cheaper, and cleaner. Now, that test that you just saw was uh, the most recent in a slew of them, going back like four years. Uh, we are characterizing the fuel. So a lot of rocket companies, when they start, why am I holding this, will uh, <laughs> choose a fuel with known properties. They will design a rocket around the fuel with a goal in mind. Uh, we'll call that starting at square one. Well, Blue Shift started at square zero. We designed this new fuel from the ground up, uh, taking the long view approach for our customers and for the environment, and it's working. In early February, we uh, produced the theoretical maximum thrust for the four inch engine that you just saw in the video. Bill Green and his crew were there to film it. And then when they went home, we did another test and exceeded theoretical maximum. So we will keep pushing, but we are almost done developing the fuel. Once that happens, we scale up to a six inch engine that will actually fly. At that point, it is a sprint. Each test will cost about $750. And we have a pool of equity paid engineers that we are going to pull on as many as we can full time to help speed up <laughs> this process. Uh, this is where you come in. You can help, by the way. Uh, Blue Shift has a Patreon campaign. You can uh, support us, become a sustaining donor, and help offset the costs of this critical phase. When the six-inch engine is ready to fly, we will go to the tech place in Brunswick. We're going to use their new composites facility and uh, make a fuselage. Our first flight uh, next year is going to open up all kinds of new opportunities. Um, we can apply for new grants at that point. It'll build credibility with maybe some angel investors, um, and it'll show the CubeSat launch brokers that we're almost ready for customers. 
Now, our first launch will involve a single stage craft. It'll kind of touch the edge of space and come back down. Uh, it will spend enough time in free fall to run short experiments. But by 2022, uh, we're going to be flying that three stage thing on the right. Uh, it can haul 30 CubeSats into orbit in a single go. So, rockets made in Maine, right? I mean, that's awesome. But, <laughs> but why stop there? See, uh, the Maine Technology Institute and the Maine Space Grant Consortium are working on a feasibility study for Spaceport Maine. Why would they do that? Well, Maine is in this great place for launching due south. Uh, you can go almost 2,000 miles without hitting any land. This lowers the costs of launch insurance, which is a huge part of the cost of launching. <laughs> Maine is also really far from the equator, which in this case is great because um, it's, it's a great point to, to launch into these orbits that kind of go over the poles like this. And the only way you can do that is by either launching due north or due south. So these advantages really dovetail. And if, uh, if that study can find a good spot, maybe somewhere down east to launch, <laughs> Uh, frankly, uh, wait times to launch CubeSats are over a year right now, and demand from this you know, kind of fairly small industry is going to skyrocket as uh, the market grows to over $60 billion in 11 years. Uh, if we can bring back just a small slice of that revenue stream to Maine, the effects will be tremendous. In sum, BlueShift Aerospace is an employee-owned Brunswick-based new space startup, and our team of seven engineers, plus me, are working to drive down the costs of launching, uh, cut the wait times to launch, and also reduce the environmental impact of small launch services. And with help, we are going to launch the rockets that we design and build in the state. So together, let us make the future of space exploration made in Maine. Thank you. Okay. Could you explain CubeSat, please? And what that is and, and why, it's, why, it's, why it's going to grow so fast. Absolutely. So a CubeSat is a really tiny satellite. Uh, miniaturization is just a wonderful thing in it. So you can now launch a, uh, a satellite that is about 10 centimeters on a side, thus a CubeSat or one standard unit, a 1U CubeSat, and then they, they go in increments up to well, there's no reason to stop, but usually they stop around six. Um, and so, so you can launch this tiny little satellite. Um, usually you can only fit one or two instruments on it. Uh, a lot of them don't really have a way to maneuver in orbit, although that's uh, changing. Uh, the great thing about these CubeSats is it's, it's cheap to launch a bunch of them at once. So instead of launching a single satellite where one failure can just you know, end the whole mission, uh, you can launch a swarm for, uh, you know, to, to, to create a communications network, to create a, a defense network, a surveillance network. Um, and, and if one of them goes and hits a speck of painted orbital velocities, then uh, that's fine. You, know, you still have all the other ones that you launched. So um, it's, it's really going to be a, a new age for, for satellites. Yeah, uh, we don't build the, the small sats or cube sats, we just launch them. Yeah? What's your biofuel made of? <laughs> it's, it's proprietary, yeah. Yes, yes, sorry? Uh, no, no, I, I really, I wouldn't advise, I, don't, I do not believe it would taste pleasant. Could your biofuel potentially be used in commercial airlines and, and such? If the commercial airline needed to take off from a very, very short runway, uh, perhaps. <laughs> um, but right now it's really meant to be uh, uh, suspended as a, as a solid fuel, uh, kind of like uh, one of the boosters on the space shuttle. So I, I don't think it would have immediate applications in a, in a jet engine. Thank you. Uh, what, what a great presentation. Thank you. So, uh, have you uh, seen any interest from, let's say, uh, Virgin Galactic or SpaceX on your program? Yeah, so uh, Virgin Galactic is, uh, th they actually are using a hybrid engine on uh, Spaceship 2 and possibly space Spaceship 3, uh, whenever that rolls out. Um, so, I, you know, we're, we're kind of uh, developing similar propulsion systems, uh, but, but our fuels are are different. Uh, SpaceX does plan to launch CubeSats. Uh, we don't really want to compete with them directly, because who, who could, frankly? Um, but uh, we're, we're planning to get a corner on uh, polar orbits, 
we're going to corner that market. And also, uh, because our, our batches are smaller, you know, 30 at a time instead of uh, hundreds at a time in some cases, uh, we can possibly customize uh, orbits for clients at much lower cost. Anyone else? All right, um, if, if I may, uh, I know that you are not normally asked to do this at a presentation, but uh, everyone, would you please take out your phones, your smartphones? Navigate to your social media platform of choice. And like or follow Blue Shift Aerospace <laughs> for a chance to see uh, videos of new tests and uh, eventually launches, chances to see uh, photos of the, of the team at work, and a uh, chance to interact with us one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, and also, in terms of one-on-one, -on -one, I'll, I'll be around after. <laughs> yes, you in, uh, in the back. Uh, You'll you have to really shout. Do you have t-shirts? Uh, yeah, we do have a small store uh, where you can buy t-shirts. Um, we, we haven't really developed too much al al along those lines because, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to develop a rocket. We don't want people being like, well, I'm XXL, not XL. So, <laughs> so we're, we're not really developing that too heavily, but I do picture a table of Blue Shift hats ready to go at our first launch. Yeah. All right, well, thank you very much. That was excellent. Really, really good.